Okay. We're okay. Welcome, everybody. Having in mind that, you know, we're a subcommittee. We, we do, do not get the countdown for recording because we're just a subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're going to go. We're going to start today. To, uh, this is the Northampton Police Review Commission subcommittee, uh, community outreach subcommittee. Today is Saturday, February 13, 2021. This meeting is going to run from 2.30 to 4. Um, this is being recorded on Zoom and it's going to become public uh, material. Um, cool. So everybody was able to get uh, the agenda. So hopefully we don't have to send it. Uh, we're going to do a roll call. Noah? Yeah. Um, Dan? Present. Carol. Here. Javier. Here. And Chris. Here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Noah. Uh, we're going to go with the approval of meeting minutes. Everybody got the minutes from the last meeting? I think we did, right? Mm, maybe. Sorry, y'all. No, I haven't finished them in time. <laughs> okay, don't but worry. About it. It, there's a lot going on. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to table the minutes. Uh, cool. So today we're going to do literally we're going to try to finalize mm -hmm. the, the both the possible online intake and the um, hard copy intake that's that's all what we need to do today if mm -hmm. we end um we don't have even fully comment because it's, it's really specific what we're doing today and we're gonna try to so understand how after receiving testimonies how we're gonna process that because if you notice um Sean Donovan was able to get a fair amount of comments, but there was, you know, the way, and I would have loved for him to get in touch with us, the way how he presented those, uh, those testimonies was sort of a little all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Um, about valuable, but really snips and without, you know, I would have loved to hear a little more about the specific of those comments. But uh, so then, can you give us an update in relation to the to the online stuff? Yeah. So uh, Noah and I met with Frank earlier this week, um, and the the short version of it is that there's not a great way to accept anonymous files at all in any system. Um, you know, from an IT security standpoint, that makes sense, right? You don't want someone to upload anything. Um, you know, it could have viruses, anything like that. Um, but as an added layer, the city's domain for um, Google Forms doesn't allow you to attach files at all, um, like for an account under their domain. So um, what we came up with, what we have, uh, Noah should have access to the website now. Um, to edit the correct pages, <laughs> uh, which is good. Um, what we what we have and what I did, I made a shorter version of that form, so it's in the NPRC testimonials Google account. Okay. Um, one moment, I'm going to create. I'm just going to share my screen really quickly. Um, and so, essentially, the having a separate form. Uh, see all of my extra tabs I'm going to close a lot of these we don't need <laughs> laws we don't need that we don't need that okay um anyway no, no judgment <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's trying to trying to dig my way through that uh the review or the statewide uh commission or statewide uh changes that include the, the oversight commission and all those things anyway um so we have basically one form and we can embed this in an iframe on a page. So it would look basically would have the city's stuff up at the top and then it would have this um, where someone can read a shortened version of what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. There's a link to what like our full document will be um, if they wanted to read it. Um, and if they want to submit a text file, a text file, an audio document or a video file, there's actually a second form that they would, that they would click here um, and it brings it then to this, which is you can upload a file that addresses any or all of the following questions, and then those four questions that we have, and then they can we switch over to preview. Um, oh, right. <laughs> 
suppose I should actually start it. Um, do, do, we'll go with this copy and close and responses. Yeah, we're accepting responses. Great. That's the file upload. Okay. Required. Done. So now if I try that, it should work. Why is it not working? Oh, fix the upload settings. What did I do wrong? Ah, okay. So I have to fake. I'll, I'll just get this upgraded. So that's why it's not showing up. Um, I have to upgrade the account. But uh, that was because I basically set it so that um, we could go up to 10 gigs of storage per per person, or sorry, per for this whole thing. If we need to, we can increase it. Um, and we've got the number of files that people can upload is five at a time, um, which I thought was acceptable for adding uh, statements. Dan, I have a question. <clears throat> I, maybe I'm wrong, but that looks like for the, so let's say you're f filling out that, right? That, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that one person can upload five files and that goes all the way to 10 gigabytes? Yeah, it would. It would allow that. Okay, um, I mean, that would be the maximum for the entire thing, right? So somebody coming after that to upload a hundred megabytes wouldn't be able to do it because I already reached the megabyte. So megabytes. what I need, what I plan to do is to just increase the um, the whole form. I'll just, it's like a dollar. So I'll just pay the dollar to Google so that it extends it up to like a terabyte of storage space. So yeah, this well, will that, that will do. <laughs> yeah, this will increase. I just have to actually go through it, just, just pay for it and get it done. Um, but it's really cheap. Uh, but I didn't want to do all of, like get everything and then have people be confused or not want this. Um, so I did want to check in with everybody. Um, the other part of this, so like they, if they want to actually, um, so there are two parts. One is that if they do want to submit a file, they still have to log in with a Google account. There's no, there's no way around that. There's no system that allows mm -hmm. someone to do it. So what we could do. And that's you know part of this is we can we can have a question that says do you want to submit anonymously, where we just assign them a pseudonym. But we would still know who submitted. Uh, as as a, as the the owners of the document. But they they would still need, an account. They still need an account. There's no there's no way around okay. that. Um, there is a way to allow people to add files anonymously. Um, to like a Google folder, but if you allow that, they can also see everyone who has, like, they can see right. all yeah. of the other stuff and edit them. So that that's not really a good option for us. Right. Oh, that, that, that. And Dan, the city, oops, Dan can you, can you explain um, to me if somebody is anonymous, how do we know their identity because of, they have a Google account? Yeah. So they would yeah, have, okay. which yeah. is not a perfect identifier, right? Cause you can make up a Google account right now. Right. Right. Anonymous one, <laughs> um, and they could submit it that way, but they would still, it would, for our, for our purposes, we would still have that, we would still see that account that they submitted with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would, two things. So the first one is, I, I don't think it's, a, that's, a, a, that's problematic, like really problematic, because what we can do, I mean, if, if let's say Sean Donovan has a, a couple of, a handful of people and he, he can help people to fill it out with his account as the interviewer, right? Yep. And I think that's a good way to go. Yeah, and... The other the other option we can do is just have people email the the, the account as well. So I was going right. to say that. So you have three things, right? You may have just emailing the account, doing the online intake, or doing a hard copy and reading it. And, yeah. you know. And in fact, I actually got a... Uh, I guess somebody mailed City Hall, um, and so I got a physical copy uh, yesterday of like uh, somebody's document that is completely anonymous. There's no return address on the envelope. It's not okay. signed, uh -huh. so that that could be another option too. Yeah. Um, all of that being said, the other the other forms where people want to just submit. So like so they just want like to input text for themselves. They just hit the next button and then here's four answers. Perfect. They can type them. Do, do, do. Right. Um, there's, these are things that we probably want to think about in terms of like how we're asking people if they want to identify or not. 
So optional, it's information. If you would like to and feel comfortable, you can add information about yourself with uh, some basic race categories. We can obviously change and make these. I was just lazy and grabbed the census ones. Um, add, um, there's still an ethnicity question that should be added and then optional first name and last name if they want to be identified. Mm -hmm. I would say that's fine. I mean, I. If we start asking for more identifying qualities, we uh, we are sort of breaking our own rule to try to give people because at the end of the day, all this is going to become a uh, public record, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this is good enough because you know every time that we're doing a public record request, and you know, and even now in our Hampton, uh, many times we don't have the breakdown by race, which is sort of frustrating. So I appreciate the fact that that we're trying to do it independently if people are going to feel comfortable doing it or not but you know we, we this is these are three things that i think we can live with and i don't think we need i mean we can add sort of a specific age groups um mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh a range because you know we heard at the, uh, i i do remember um at way back at the beginning of the commission I remember somebody saying, so the, the kids who play in the skate park mm -hmm. uh, were sort of, as somebody was saying, that we're being harassed by cops. Mm -hmm. So age range, sort of having that sort of range from, you know, would be good. But uh, besides that, I, I don't know. I don't think anything else that would be useful. Chris, Carol, Dan? Mm -hmm. I'm sort of on the fence. I mean, uh, do we want to get a sense of uh, uh, non-cisgender folks that are participating? Um, is that something that we that we can just sort of assume by whatever answer or responses they give us in the document? Well, we can we can add a line about preferred pronouns. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. That would be a good way to. Simple way to get at it, yeah. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna get rid of these extra. Dad, where, what, what, where um, do you learn to do all this stuff? I uh, do a lot of this kind of work at, um, well, as part of my job at UMass, but I also like quantitative research is like my jam. So, uh -huh. okay, little... that's good. <laughs> I mean, granted, my preference would have been Qualtrics because it gives a lot more control. And like in Google Forms, I'm like, where's the where's the control for this? Uh -huh. <laughs> Why don't I have exactly what I want? But that's fine. We can we will work with what we got in Google's the free version, so it's fine. So uh, we have age range that we're interested in. Um, well, so what's what's the bottom of the age range? That's going to be the the question of sort of like. Okay what are our meaningful points of distinction? Do you want to say yeah. like under, uh, By generation? 16 Gen generation Z? Gen Z? <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, um, do we have a lower bound? Is there- Yeah, that's the question. Is there someone who should not be submitting to this? As far as I know, there's not, a, there's not an age limit to public comments, but this isn't quite the same. Right. Um, you could say under thirty. You know. Uh, you you can say, yeah. 20, or under twenty five. Don't don't tr don't don't sweat how how young you know. Yeah. Yeah, under twenty five, under thirty five. Twenty five to thirty five. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay, and then thirty five and up. Thirty five and up. Yeah. That's I mean, 36 that's, and up. That's a huge range, yeah. Well, that, we might want to narrow that down a little, maybe like 36 to 56. Yeah, I would, because then you get into older people like me. Uh, that's a specific demographic. Um, yeah, have... let me ask you a question. With all these categories then, Dan, uh, is there something that we're not going to hand tabulate these, are we? No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. So it it will do it 
for us, right? Yeah, Google gives you like some basic responses, but you can export it as a as a CSV and get all of this data and then use all the it demographic, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So then we can, you know, I'll I could do like a quick pivot table or something in Excel to drop that. Um, okay. So that, so that it becomes sort of readable, but at the same time, I mean, if unless this blows up by a huge margin, um, I don't expect us to be overwhelmed either. Um, and oh, you mean with with processing the data? Yeah. The the demographic stuff will it as you said it'll it'll take care of itself. Yeah, I think the the bigger part is going to be the how do you read? thematic answers? Yeah, and doing all yeah. of the, all of the qualitative research that I have taken classes on and done a little bit of, but oh boy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, my whole research background has been qualitative, you know, or mi mixed method, but leaning towards qualitative. And what what it seems to me is that we're going to live together. We're going to, you know. <laughs> we're going to room together yeah. sitting because the processing is like a circle saying you know let's look at these responses and look what look at what the strong themes are and that's what we're writing about you know, overwhelming so, themes so. Yeah, so we would need to add a section in the other 66 in, in the hard copy of oh Talking, yeah. talking about doing it by hand. What's that, Javier? Say that again. So uh, all this that, that it's being added here, it's not mm -hmm. in the hard copy. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So we would need to, to add that consistent. to it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's not complicated. It's only that that's gonna take a little more room than what we were expecting. But uh, but it's, it's still you know, it's still this is optional. It's not that they are not filling out this and these are mandatory fields. And if you don't fill out this, you cannot submit. Right. I'm assuming that either they do it or not, they can submit it anyway. Right, Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all optional, and in fact, I'm taking a little bit of a the old style of, of like data collection mm -hmm. and you ask like the personal identifier stuff at the end mm -hmm. after people are sort of emotionally invested in the like mm -hmm. their voice out. So you uh, drop the de drop the demographics to the end. Yeah. Um, but also labeling and like I can I can do this for all of them, but just optional, like making even though it says, you know, optional, this is information about you if you want to, but just optional everywhere um, yep. to make it very clear. Mm -hmm. you don't have to disclose any of this. We're not going to force it, but I think it might help. Yeah. So we just yeah. end up with an we end up with an unknown um, category too. Yeah. Um, so anybody that doesn't answer, we would just put in a missing value. Mm -hmm. um, so then, can you share this with me? Um, so these are all in the um, Northampton or the oh, NPRC testimonials okay. Google Drive account. That'd be, that's the owner of it. Um, so how do you how do you physically get there? You just go into the uh, share, so, the share drive. No. Nope. Yeah, it's, share drive. it's the first thing that pops up on the share drive. Okay. Okay. Great. I haven't been there lately. Okay. Um, so there's multiple copies of this because we had to test around to see what the limitations of the city yeah. uh, website yeah. is. So the one that we're working in is called... Is the most recent, the edited today, yeah. Yeah, it's called draft, all mm -hmm. capital letters, draft. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, it shows immediately in my... Okay, perfect. Awesome. Cool, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to make the changes to the, the hard copy that we're going to be sending out. Cool. Okay. Uh, there we go. Cool, I can see some people on here now, finally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anonymous cheetah making some, looking at different things. Um, <laughs> that's, it. that's just how it does it. Um, but yeah, so once we, as long as we're okay with this, um, Noah, I will ask Noah to put this up on the city website and they can work with um, Frank, who was really helpful <laughs> once we finally got him into a call, it was super helpful about like, like really thinking about what other departments are doing and what the city resources are. Um, it sounds like there's the city's trying to get together a 
like a complaint form um, for multiple city websites or multiple city services, which is cool. Um, but it doesn't sound like they'll have that up and running in a time that we could adapt that same thing. And the web form doesn't allow for like video and, and photos. I think their, their limit is like six megabytes. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Which is, you know, for a text file or maybe even a really short sentence audio file would be fine. But for, <laughs> for what we're looking for, it would be, I'm, I'm guessing, pretty under underwhelming. So uh, that's why we have this other file form um, for the upload. Um, and I've already got the link to it in here. So it'll become a live link when you when you're actually looking at it. So people can see it, they can click there or they can see the, the link to our document. So when we make the changes there, here's the PDF of it. We can update that PDF um, so that it includes the demographic information, but we also have our NPRC, that should be, I think this should be testimonials, instead of testimonies, you can fix that. Um, get that set up. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I also I have opened the the word the edita, the editable version of in Word. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna work on that one today. So this is the thing. So um, with the hard copy, I'm gonna get it done during the week, and by Monday, uh, just adding what we saw, what we added today. Just mm -hmm. only that. I mean, it doesn't require any comment. I can just do it. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send the final draft to you guys. And if you have any comment, you're going to have, you you can, you know, uh, it's direct to me if you have any comment. Okay. Um, if, if there's no comment, probably there's not going to be because we already approved the first, uh, the hard copy. We're just adding this. By Monday, I'm going to send that to every single person in the um, commission, mm -hmm. every single person in the city council. And from there, everybody can just send that copy to be printed to everybody. Okay, so we start. So because we sadly we're gonna have only one single full uh, public speaking uh, hearing left. Dan, can you remind me when that's gonna happen? March. Yeah. Uh, March sixth. So Saturday. Okay. Wait, right. I think Saturday, Sunday, weekend. It's a weekend. I'm pretty sure it's a Saturday. Okay. Yeah, it oh. is. Starts yes. at 11, 11, right? Yes. Yes. Cool. So probably we're going to have to find times to meet uh, towards the end of next week. So probably from each week, just to be able to, to, to review if we're getting any material. If we're not getting material to see what needs to be changed and what, what we should be targeting um and in the case that we're getting material we're going to be evaluating if we need to change anything in the process and even if if we are getting material and you know the people i mean i know really little about this kind of a analysis but you guys know so if you feel that well you know they are not getting a, 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 I don't want to say the answer that we want, but certainly a more developed answer. More, we're just getting two or three lines in this one that are really, maybe it's because of how the question is being phrased. So we may want to sort of reevaluate um, and modify things, depending on. Yeah, the... yeah. I, I just wanted to comment on that. I don't think that um, even though qualitative research has the flexibility of, you know, uh, sort of focusing down the question if you're interviewing a person and saying, can you say more about that? I don't think that methodologically speaking, we we should really do much changing of the questions that we generated that we spent a lot of time with. But I do think that I agree with you, Javier, that in meeting and seeing that we're not getting this outreach effort is not reaching certain populations, that's where you know, in terms of our outreach process, that's where we may want to make changes. How do other people feel about that? I don't think we should be changing questions. Unless, yeah. unless there was somehow some giant fundamental flaw that we had. Oh, okay. Yeah. In, in there, but I don't, I don't see that as happening. 
Yeah, I don't see that as happening either. They're pretty open-ended questions, for right. one. Chris? Yeah. Maybe it would be worthwhile in, say, examining the first, I don't know, 100 re responses mm -hmm. and seeing if there is a trend in which the answers are uh, coming back that are really sort of, that, that kind of muddy the waters. It's just, so, you know, something that we should get, we could probably offer up a finite uh, or, a, or a certain number of, of responses and say within, within these, maybe we, we've noticed people are either skipping a question or not answering it fully or answering it in a certain bend mm -hmm. that may force us to reevaluate it. But, uh, but I think it, it, it would be worthwhile to just look at the first, I don't know, however many responses and see what, what comes back. And then, I certainly you know, agree. Yeah. You okay. don't want to wait till the end. So, which yeah. is, which is, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little better explained than what I was able to do. And, and I think a good example that I have, um, doing a, an immigration evaluation with people in Western Mass, many times, one of the things that you're looking for is if the person is victim of a crime. Right. Usually right. when you are uh, interviewing and evaluating female undocumented folks, um, that's, that's really one of the things that you want to make sure. And I was doing an interview and evaluation. And I asked her, uh, have you ever suffered domestic violence? And she said, no. Um, so I keep going. I finished my, my evaluation. She offered me tea. We start talking. And all of a sudden she said, yeah, you know, my husband left last month and he used to hit me a lot and kick me. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like, I asked you. And, <laughs> and all, of, all of a sudden, I, I, you know, domestic violence is a fancy way to say, did your husband did you? uh, yeah. kick yeah. the shit out of you? So, right, right. <laughs> so, so you were too you were too professional for yeah. So, Maybe she was just testing you, you know. Uh, God, God knows. So, but I, but I do think that that's worth for us to, to to what Chris just said, just to take a look openly, and see. Oh, shoot! What we were sort of what we were reaching with this question was to get a sense of this, but right. looks like people are right. reading that question in a different way. Yeah, right. good point. Good point. Right. I think. The other thing that, um, so I met with Cynthia, um, we've been meeting pretty regularly to try and figure out what, what we want to push, put forward for the agendas and all those sort of things. But one of the things that we've been sort of looking at um, and thinking about is sort of how to present like the forms and structures and Carol, we looked at the documents that you sent about like how to, how to structure a report, you know, in a way that it does all the things that we want so that it's got a strong narrative, that it's a coherent thing. Um, and one of the things, like thinking about what I've seen that I liked, that was also the Brattleboro report and the way that they structured it. I mean, granted, they did a lot more outreach and had a lot more um, information coming in. But if we have examples, either from public comment, um, from the public hearings, from emails that we've gotten, or the things that we get from the outreach that we're doing, where we can find that there's text Mm -hmm. And there's a local example of the phenomena that we're that we're looking at or explaining that so that because I think that's one of the things that all of these a lot of um, sort of emails with you know a lot of either not knowing about what some of the the concerns are or wanting to exempt like to say oh well that's the national stuff but we're special <laughs> and to say like well we are special in some ways, right? And, you know, people that say we're not Chicago, we're not New York, of course not, thankfully. Um, you know, we, we have you know, maybe a 10th of their population in some cases or much less. Um, but that the phenomena are, like the pe people are still being impacted by the same things that are happening. But to even if there's not, you know, if we can't take what we get and turn it into a really nice, really, like I don't, we're not gonna have the same sort of power of explanation as, you know, a three month study that was all focus groups and dedicated to this. Right, right. Would produce, but we can still introduce those voices mm -hmm. and then absolutely humanize the recommendations. So I think some of this is also going to be keeping in mind, you know, reading with that, like, oh, this is a really good, succinct quote from someone mm -hmm. about their experiences. And I think that, or, you know, if we're reading this and we, we find that there's a summary of things, we can introduce that summary as something so even if we don't get to do sort of the really deep analysis <laughs> um you know that 
that we might want to do, um, you know, we can still, I think this is still useful in terms of contextualizing the issues that that, that we face. Yeah, just localize it. Lo yeah. Localize it with some some short quotes. Yeah. Th that That's for center. I mean, it's, it's interesting what you're saying then, because, you know, I don't only see it from the point of view of, uh, um, I think works in two different levels. The first one is set up to know that the, we have been talking about this being a systemic issue. Mm -hmm. And right. people keep hanging to a specific one event, one event in their life that was really useful, and and you know not not only creating the sense that, that like this is systemic, mm -hmm. not 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 only a one off, but also at the same time being able to, I think I and I'm th I was thinking this after the public comment. Uh, did Northampton, this is a question first before my statement, did Northampton uh, declare racism um, public health issue? Yes. I yes. saw a lot of that public, like health issue on the on some comments on, on the past. Um, so I think that would be worth also uh, to, 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 depending on the material that we're getting and the feedback that we're getting with this outreach to talk about that because many times uh, you know the pervasive the, how pervasive the system is is not just because the system is here it's mm -hmm. because of the passivity and the inaction and the willingness of the inaction of people around right mm -hmm. and i think that's also worth to mention in, when, when we talk about context the context of norhand this sort of uh liberal exceptionalism that we were seeing at least i'm saying right. Yeah, yeah it's of, it doesn't happen here. It's just not enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, so uh, Michael Quinlan has, uh, he's um, wrote up a document because it was both the state and the state had their um, declaration that racism is a, is a health issue, um, but also that the, um, that Northampton had a, res had a resolution and there's also the Western Mass, Western Mass and I don't remember exactly the network's name, um, but they had also said like this is this is a problem, like a health problem. So that like it's at multiple levels, but the but Northampton had at least one resolution, and it might have even been maybe it was two resolutions, or maybe it was the same resolution, and there was a second hearing that I'm thinking of because <laughs> uh, they they have that process where they hear everything twice. Um, but yeah, they were both they were both in there, and I think that'll be a strong argument for maybe where some of these different tools or recommendations that we have go, like the Department of Health would, you know, could oversee some of those things that are directly related to health. But that's, uh, that we still have to have sort of conversations with ourselves around that. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. hopefully very soon, you'll get a document of sort of ideas for what a new department could be, trying to structure and organize that um, <clears throat> and asking for some feedback from everybody as well as to what what that would hold where where you might see it live what it what the scope of it is going to be um now that we've done all of this research and had all these conversations to start making some pretty solid recommendations so getting all of that but i think it would be great if we especially if we move towards a board of health department of health uh, health based um approach if we can again find statements that match that to say this is a community concern this is you know people you know describing you know their experiences with you know police and um as as health intervention officials <laughs> uh in a lot of ways where it's like well, you know may want someone with a medical background to do those things um well and, you know it listening um can i make a comment here yeah uh, listening to you talk about this reminds me of the, the concept of social determinants of health, which means it's not just how you're made up physically, you know, whether you have underlying disease, right, or whether you have good access to healthcare systems. I mean, that may be important, but social determinants of health include where you live, what your zip code is. Police, I would add policing, how prevalent police are in your immediate community and your group of friends. You know, if you live in Florence Heights, you're going to see a squad car there a lot. What does that mean to you? 
that means you're under surveillance in a way that where I live down off Florence Road down near East Hampton, you know, you see a police car if there's an accident at the intersection. Um, so, um, yeah, I think this whole concept, we can use this depending on what the testimony is that comes in, uh, talking about the social determinants of health. I think anything that we can put represent under not just public safety, but pu public, uh, public safety, but also public health is an important contribution to that final report. But it depends on what people say in, in the survey. Chris? Also to buttress that, um, you, remembering that people of color and uh, non-gender binary people, as a, you know, from a baseline, are dealing with, are, are, are dealing with a stress level in when they come into contact with uh, cops. You know, I, I, I've, <laughs> I grew up in New York City. I spent the majority of my life in New York City. I've played in uh, bands that have toured across the country. And so I, I can safely say that I've had interactions with police in 25 out of 50 states in the union. And none of them have been positive, <laughs> even in the cases where I needed them. Um, recently, uh, I think just before the holidays, I was with my wife in the car. My wife is white. Um, and we had dropped our sons off at school. And I had made my, uh, my youngest goes to People's Institute on Gothic Street. And I did what I normally do and, you know, shot down Gothic Street and made a left on, on Main. And I didn't realize you weren't supposed to do that. Um, so I get pulled over. And the cop was courteous, but my baseline reaction was one of fear and rage mm -hmm. with my wife sitting next to me. And, you know, I froze, I couldn't, I couldn't speak because I instantly go back to that place where I was dragged out of a car. I was shoved into a wall, you know, um, I was handcuffed with my hands behind my back without anyone giving me a reason for that. So I think the, when, when you're talking about, uh, when we're speaking about, um, the, the health concerns, there's a very, there's a very, uh, there, again, there's a, there's a baseline with which, uh, subjugated groups are coming from in dealing with the police. Just, just, you know, when they see the lights, when they, are approached it, it's mm -hmm. it's completely different than you know their their white middle class counterparts so yeah absolutely um, i sent to each one of you including uh no i sent it to you too um the resolution that the <laughs> northampton city council uh, council passed in relation to mental health so you can take a look to it and you know they are nice overlaps like our sam snape that they have a, a lot of overlap with what we're just talking now and all the things that we have talked with the full commission and in different subcommittees so it would be worth to take a look again okay. and not if you can send that to the entire commission that also would be good mm -hmm. um i think that is there are portions of that resolution that thank you so much Noah, um that strengthen our position recommending changes and i so i, I think it would be good for us to review that resolution for the full commission to mm -hmm. and you know i'm gonna be a pain in the ass and in the next meeting i'm gonna highlight certain things and i'm gonna just read it in front of the full commission to remind them um just to get it there um is there anything else that we're gonna so then is there any possibility that by tuesday we have this going online um, yeah, I mean, um, did you have to say, so Monday is a holiday, yep. mm -hmm. uh, so I don't want to force Noah into working on a holiday <laughs> when they're already working on weekends and, and doing all that. So Noah, do you feel comfortable, um, doing an iframe in bed on Tuesday? Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, awesome. So, um, 
the form is set. We're good on that. So we just need to we just need to do the the iframe embed. And I can uh, no, I can also help you get the iframe if you need that. Um, okay. If you haven't done those before, but I I just don't have the the access that you do on the city website to edit it. But yeah, it that would be. be awesome. If I can't YouTube it and figure it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know that I, I, I fixed my bathroom with YouTube? It's very helpful. Oh, I, yeah. I watch YouTube videos all the time about Zoom, so. <laughs> cool. So we're almost done. So I would like to see um date for our next uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So it would be the week of the starting with the fifth the week of the fifteen. Um just a reminder, we're gonna have meetings, the police and services subcommittees meeting on Monday, full commission six to eight on Tuesday, Wednesday is spending on contracts in the glorious alternatives is meeting uh Wednesday. What about Friday? Was I misheard that? Is someone meeting on Thursday? Uh, no, no. The last two meetings next week is spending on contract and alternative on Wednesday. Okay. So no, nobody's meeting on Thursday or Friday. Which one? Fr of those Friday days? is a certainly a better day for me. Okay. Is I mean, as long as it's after four thirty, I can anytime okay. on Friday. Um. Chris? Um, it, Friday could work, but it would have to be probably around six. Ooh, yeah. Carol? Terrible. <laughs> oh, what well. About, what about Thursday? Thurs it, I could do Thursday as long as it's not uh, in the middle of the day. Okay. Dan? Yeah, Thursday, again, the same. Like, I'm I work until 4 30 Monday through Friday. So anytime after that. I yeah, can... I can actually it turns out Thursday is gonna be better if you want to do an evening, you know, thing. Chris, what, typically, what... typically for me, yeah, evenings are better. Um five anytime after five mm -hmm. is ideal for me because I have two kids and my wife comes home from work and can take over. Perfect. So um yeah, anytime after five on Thursday should work. And Carol, you for you, it was better if it was after seven, right? Yeah. After seven on, on Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. That let's should be say, fine. Let's say seven. Okay, that's good. Perfect. So, yeah. agenda items. So, um, so update of the de deploying both online and hard copy. Mm -hmm. um, we can, well, Hopefully, if by Thursday we had gotten testimonies uploaded, uh, uh, this is a good question. So any of us would be able to go to the drive and see those testimonies? Yeah. Okay. Um, who would okay. get the first uh, bell? I mean, who, who would know first if we have incoming? So right now it's just set to um, the alert to go out to the Northampton or the NPRC testimonials. However, I can set up so that it sends everybody an email. That would be ideal. To say that a form has been submitted. Um, so that... I like a notification, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other option that I have, and I think this might be, a, this is a little less complex, but a little, it might be more useful, is to just set up forwarding for that address to us. So that anytime someone sends any email, so that if there was a question, because I know, um, Carol, you had sent a, what happens with this? <laughs> yeah, right. And I saw it and I meant, okay, I'm going to respond to that. And then I promptly forgot about it until I looked in there again today. Ha-ha. Yeah. Ha -ha. <laughs> um, but well, so that, that would be that, ideal. So that everything, so I'll just set it up so it's a forwarding to everybody's. Um, Perfect. So. Oh, that's that's excellent. Thank you. So the, so the first point to the agenda is going to be an update about how we're doing with the online intake and the hard copy intake, right? The second point in the agenda is if intakes have come in, hopefully we're going to be able to take a look before coming to the meeting and talk about impressions, how we're doing, 
um, and the third one is, is there any other kind of outreach, including, and I remember Chris mentioning radio, we talk about um, newspaper ad, and so that's something that, that you, you, you talked to the city about if they would be willing to pay for, you know, newspaper ad or radio ad. Yeah, so um, I sent that one out. I didn't get like a real response, um, but they've given us like a, we can do the city's social media accounts. Um, we've also, uh, so in the daily, or the, the Hampshire Gazette, um, Greta Jockham has, you know, attended our meetings and writes about, what, you know, those things. Um, but they've also posted our, um, our announcements for public hearings and things like that. So I would be more than willing to bet that we could reach out to them and to um, um, Jackson Cote, Cody uh, from Mass Live as well. Perfect. Yeah, wouldn't the Gazette do something like that um, as a public service? If you if you typed yeah. it up as a public service memo, they yeah, probably like they probably run it. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that's better than an ad spot. Oh um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Talking yeah. about that, I have a question. Did you, did anybody here take a look to the the headline of the our last, uh, like promoting the public speaking, the last one? It it I, I don't know. I remember seeing it and almost and and said that we were gonna be doing sort of an update of our work. And I got I got a little sort of confused. Um, uh, are you talking about the newspaper or? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No, I remember seeing that, but yeah, no, we, we don't have an update yet. We won't have that until <laughs> yes. the, we might have a rough draft before the March 6th, uh, to give like an outline of what we'll have as a report, but Ex extension. <laughs> yeah. and, <laughs> and, you know, I think, um, Greta, um, in that in that act in that public hearing announcement it even says down at the bottom like we won't have anything final until it's due <laughs> right, yeah, right right it's like i feel like i'm like back in college like back it's like no it's the due date is the due date <laughs> yeah, right right <laughs> um, okay cool oh. excellent so i'm gonna be sending um the agenda to noah soon we are gonna be meeting next thursday at seven for an hour and a half Mm -hmm. 7 to 8 30 um and then you're gonna set it up so we get something set, like forwarded if any testimony comes in yep so um before we get off just because i want to make sure that i have the right email addresses for everybody um do, 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 where did those go forwarding here we go uh so for uh email addresses um let me go back and make sure. <clears throat> Sorry, I always I was panicked because now I think I've got like five different email addresses for different people. <laughs> yeah, that's an issue. Um, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, for Carol, is it C Owen at Westfield? Dot M A dot E D U. Okay. All right. Easy enough. I'm gonna grab that one. It says boom. There's that one. Okay. Um, next up is, um, we won. So you should get a, oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, so the way that it's setting up, it looks like it's going to ask for a confirmation code to send to you, Carol. Oh, okay. And I guess this is going to do the same thing for the others. So I guess this is good that we're all in this together in this moment. All right. Let's see. To allow it to. OK, so click on this. All right. Confirm. Easy. OK. Right? And it didn't. It said confirmation success. OK, cool. Um, so looks like I'm. I've got, okay, so Carol, um, Chris, you should get one as well. And it's the K, uh, sorry, uh, KBanks7676 yep. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. And then Javier, uh, uh, so jluongo, NPRC at gmail.com. Yep. All right, perfect. So we've got these. So any email that comes in should automatically. Um, so once you get that and verify, it should come in. Um, so that we've got those. Any cool. email that comes in, you'll get a copy of it. Um, when someone fills out the, the form, an email will be sent that says, hey, you have a new form submission, click here to see it. So you can go and see the responses. Um, so we should be good on that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I, I got the confirmation email. So okay, awesome. Excellent. So I just had a quick question. You, you mentioned there's a uh, what meeting is occurring on Monday night? Uh, I thought that was a holiday. No. No, no, I didn't say Monday. Strategies. Oh, not Monday. Okay. You know, Monday, Monday, the uh, policy or police policies and services. Okay. okay. Hold their meeting for it. Okay. Oh yeah, I mean yes, the six thirty to eight policies and services. Tuesday, uh, six to eight full commission. Wednesday is spending on contracts, and when it's also Wednesday alternatives. Um, well, you know, we were the ones who met in Martin Luther King Day, so yeah. <laughs> um, so. A real quick, um, Javier and Chris, did you? Okay, never mind. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, I got a confirmation email. But, um, yep. Huh. It's weird that it doesn't. Yeah. All right. I will check this just to make sure that it works. I'm going to send an email um, to it just to make sure that it's filtered to that it take that it gets to everybody. Okay. Um, We can. We, we don't have to do this in in real time. Um, I'll, I'll make it work. But. Okay. So I think we're almost done. Is there anything else that anybody would like to say or to talk about? Excellent. Um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I I so move. Uh, second. Yes. Excellent. Chris second. No, <laughs> and Dan third, and I'm fourth. Uh, Noah, can you <laughs> count us? Yep. Um, Dan. Yes, please. Javier. Yes. Carol. Yes. Chris. Yes. Well, thank you all. Thank, thank you, you so guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.